Hello, young little minds. Welcome to another session of All Force E-Learning Program. Right? So, this is physics session number 66. We were doing with capacitors. We have started a new chapter called capacitors in the previous session. Now, we will continue with capacitors. But before going to that, let's have a recall of what all the fundamental things required to understand the concept. Well, I was telling you charge is a fundamental property. Right, methods of charging, there are three methods, charging by friction, induction and conduction, then Coulomb's inverse square law, the field produced by a charge, charge produces field around it, the electric field, the electric field intensity is force per unit charge. Then later we have talked about flux, the measure of number of lines of force, Gauss law, the total flux is the, uh, is directly proportional to the charge inside the Gaussian surface, then we have derived the electric field for various charges. Then electric potential, potential is the state, electrical state of the charge body. It represents the state which determines the direction of flow of charge. Then potential is defined as the work done per unit charge, right? So potential difference, work done per unit charge in moving a charge from one body to one point to another point. Then potential due to a point charge, potential due to multiple charges, so on and so forth. We have derived the formula for the potential for many, this thing. We got the relation between potential and electric field, etc. Later, we started with capacitors. You know, I was telling you, capacitor is a device, is an electrical device, which is used to store electrical energy in the form of charge. We store electrical potential energy. It is to store charge and energy. So whenever in need, we will be making use of it. We are in excess of energy, we will store it. Whenever in need, we will use that energy. So store charge, the device used is a capacitor. Now, a capacitor is like a tank storing water. Right? I store water. The amount of water stored depends on the level. So the amount of charge stored Q, Q depends on potential. So Q is equal to CV. C is called capacity of a capacitor or capacitance. Now this C is equal to Q by V. So we were uh, taking the unit as Coulomb per volt. I said this is Farad. The unit is Farad. Right? So C is equal to Q by V Farads. Well, Farad is a bigger unit. We, we make use of the uh, some multiple units like millifarad, microfarad, nanofarad, picofarad, etc. Right? Then, uh, so C is equal to Q by V. The dimensional formula I have given you, it's M minus 1, L minus 2, T for 4, I square. Very important dimensional formula for capacitance. Very important. You can expect this in the entrance examination. Then, capacitance of a capacitor, C, we have uh, taken. Now, today, we will study the different types of capacitor. Out of different types of capacitor, let us take up a simple capacitor called spherical capacitor. A spherical capacitor. Well, there are many types of capacitors. There are many types. So, I am taking the simplest, first and fundamental, most simple, fundamental capacitor first which was observed. So, that is a spherical capacitor. Now, let us find out the various parameters that are pertaining to the spherical capacitor and we will take the thing. Okay. Now, consider a sphere. Now, Consider a sphere, a conducting sphere of radius r. It's a conducting sphere of radius r. Let this sphere be charged with a charge. I am giving a charge. I am storing charge on it. I, my purpose is to store charge. Capacitor is to store charge. So I am storing charge. Let's say the charge stored is q. Right? So charge on the sphere is q. Well, we have defined earlier, when whenever charge is stored, the surface charge density, it is charge per unit area. So, it is Q by, you know, the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r square. So, from this, I can write Q as sigma 4 pi r square equation 1. Right? So, for a charged sphere, charge Q, radius r, then... First charge is Q, then surface charge density, first point. You know, for this, we have even derived a formula for the electric field strength of the charged sphere on its surface. The electric field intensity of the charged sphere, it's 1 by 4 pi epsilon Q by R square. Well, for outside point, it was Q by small R square on the surface point, small R is capital R. 
So 1 by 4 is not q by small r square. For a charged sphere, right? Charge is all stored on the surface. This being a conducting sphere. It's a conducting sphere. Charge exists only on the surface. There is no charge inside. Charge inside zero. Field is zero. Flux is zero. Nothing. So all the charge inside is zero. Charge exists only on the surface. And on a conductor, whenever charge is given, the charge is distributed uniformly, uniform according to the shape, right? So it's a perfect sphere. So charge is uniformly distributed. So the electric field on the surface is one by four dot q by r square. Third one. Now the potential due to the charge sphere. The potential we have derived the formula for the potential V. V is equal to one by four pi epsilon naught q by r. It is potential on the surface of the charged sphere V, right? We have dealt with the potential in the earlier chapter. Potential is work done per unit charge. So the work done in getting a charge from infinity to the point W by Q. Then so potential V is equal to work done. So work done in moving the charge from infinity W by the test charge Q naught. So W by Q naught. From this we have derived the potential for due to point charge and potential due to the sphere also. We have given it as potential is equal to minus integral e dot dr. Well, potential is minus integral e. Electric field due to this is one by four pi epsilon naught capital Q by r square dr. So the electric field and the radius vector both are in same direction. So e dot dr is simply integral e dr. So therefore, v is equal to minus Q by four pi epsilon naught is common out integral one by r square dr. Well, one by r square I can write as r power minus two. Integrating so minus q by four pi epsilon naught r power minus two integration minus two plus one by minus two plus one minus two plus one is minus one minus minus cancel. So q by four pi epsilon naught r power minus two plus one is minus one r power minus one is one by r. So potential due to a charged sphere V. Potential on the surface of the charged sphere. Now I am storing charge on the surface. I am moving the charge from infinity to the surface. So potential difference between infinity and the surface. We know at infinity the potential due to any charge is zero. So the from from there I am storing the charge on the surface. Now the potential work done in storing a charge in putting the charge on the surface per unit charge is potential. So potential is one by four upon q by r. Well, yesterday we have defined the formula for the capacitance. The capacity of a capacitor C, capacity of a capacitor is Q by V, right? It is the amount of charge stored per unit potential. So I was defining capacitor C is equal to Q by V. When V is one volt, the charge stored is capacity of the capacitor. So C is Q by V. So now the capacity of this spherical capacitor. The capacity of a spherical capacitor is charge that is stored over it, Q, by the potential on the surface. So the potential on the surface we have found it as one by four pi epsilon Q by R because we are moving the charge from infinity to this point. At infinity potential is zero on the surface. The potential is one by four pi epsilon Q by R. Well, Q Q cancel this goes out. So the spherical capacity of a spherical capacitor is Four pi epsilon naught r. Now this is the formula for the capacity of a spherical capacitor of radius r. It is four pi epsilon naught r. When it is in air, it is four pi epsilon naught r. Had it been in a medium, then it would have been four pi epsilon r r. That's all. So the capacity of a spherical capacitor is four pi epsilon naught in air and into the radius. Now this capacity. Depends upon this capacity of a spherical capacitor. Depends on the radius, the size of the sphere radius. The size of the sphere, right? Radius represents size, and it depends on the medium in which it is placed. The medium in which it is placed. The electrical medium. That is the parameter pertinent to it is dielectric constant. Well, one by four pi epsilon is a, is always a constant, right? So therefore, capacity depends on size and the medium in which it is placed. It is independent of the charge, independent of the potential. It does not depend on any other parameter. It depends only on the size and its medium. 
सो कैपेसिटी ऑफ स्पेरिकल कैपेसिटी इज फोर पाई एप्सलॉन नॉट आर बट यू नो वी नो द वैल्यू ऑफ वन बाई फोर पाई एप्सलॉन नॉट वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड इन कुलुम्सला तो इन कुलुम्सला वी हैव फाउंड वन बाई फोर पाई नॉट वैल्यू इज नाइन इनटू टेन पावर नाइन सो देर फॉर आई कैन राइट इट एस वन बाई वन बाई फोर पाई एप्सलॉन नॉट इज नाइन इन टेन पावर नाइन सो फोर पाई एप्सलॉन नॉट विल बी वन बाई नाइन इनटू टेन पावर नाइन इनटू आर सो इट इज आर बाई नाइन इनटू टेन पावर नाइन गोस अप इट्स टेन पावर माइनस नाइन फैरेट सो टेन पावर माइनस नाइन इज नैनो फैरेट्स सो यू कैन सिंपली राइट डाउन फॉर स्पेरिकल कैपेसिटी द कैपेसिटी सिंपली आर बाई नाइन नैनो फैरेट्स कैपेसिटी ऑफ स्पेरिकल कैपेसिटर इन एयर इट इज लाइक दिस हैड इट बीन इन ए मीडियम फोर पेप्स नॉट आर इट इज फोर पेप्स नॉट के आर वे के इज डायरेक्ट कॉन्स्टेंट Well, four epsilon value is one by nine into ten power nine. Just substitute. It's a constant. K R by nine into ten power nine is the value for the capacity. So the capacity of a spherical capacitor depends upon the capacity of a spherical capacitor depends on the size of the capacitor and the medium in which it is present. I was telling yesterday. Yesterday, capacity of any capacitor depends on its shape, size, and the medium in which it is present. Well, it is a sphere. Shape is fixed. So it depends on its radius and its uh, constant like this. So therefore, capacitor can write as four pi epsilon naught r for a spherical capacitor. Is it? So therefore, C capacity of a cap spherical capacitor depends only on the size. That's all. So in short, you can write down it is r by n nano farads. So this way we derive the formula for the capacity of spherical capacitor. But the but in this one, the basic. Uh, Demerit in it is, if I take the value of this spherical capacitor, so I have calculated it as if the radius of the capacitor is r, it's r by nine nano farads. Suppose if I take a sphere of radius one meter, a sphere of radius one meter, a very big sphere like this of radius one meter, substitute here, then its capacity is one by nine nano farads, one by nine nano farads. A sphere of radius one meter sphere, metal sphere. Then its capacity is hardly one by nine nanofarads, zero point one one nanofarad. Nanofarad, it's very small. So the size is big, but the capacity of the capacitor is very much small. So the basic fault in it, uh, basic uh, demerit in this one is a, a very big sphere of radius one meter. One meter is very big with respect to our environment. Now on that hardly you can store a charge of nano coulomb per volt. 0.1 nano coulomb per volt, right? So hardly it's the capacity is only 0.1 nano coulomb. So a spherical capacitor of radius r, right? Spherical capacitor of radius r, the capacity is simply r by nine the nano farads like this. So if the capacity of a capacitor, then consider the capacity of a spherical capacitor. Then the capacity of a spherical capacitor is four pi epsilon naught r. Suppose if we gives you volume in terms of volume b, it's four by three pi r cube. R cube you can write as three v by four pi one third of. When it gives you volume, then capacity is four pi epsilon naught into r. R is this is cube through r cube, so it is four by three pi r cube. It is. 3v by 4 pi whole power 1 by 3. 3v by 4 pi whole power 1 by 3. You can even take this 4 pi inside. So when you take this inside, it is epsilon not value 4 pi inside. 4 pi cube into 3v by 4 pi whole power 1 by 3. Well, one of the 4 pi will get cancelled. You can remain with 4 pi square. So it's epsilon not 16 pi square into 3v. Power one by three. Well, three into sixteen is forty-eight. Then volume is given forty-eight pi pi square. Sorry, forty-five pi square into v whole power one by three epsilon naught in terms of volume. Sometimes we'll give you we'll give you give you the surface area in terms of surface area. We'll ask you to find the capacity. We know the surface area of a sphere is four pi r square. So it's it's s by four pi r under root. So the capacity is. 4 pi epsilon not r under root s by 4 pi. Taking this 4 pi inside epsilon not under root of 4 pi square 
into s by 4 pi. Well, this cancel capacity is epsilon naught under root 4 pi s. When surface area is clear. For a spherical capacitor, the capacity is 4 pi epsilon naught. naught. Now, on this one, let us take a very beautiful problem, which is given in uh, uh, previous entrance question. A charged liquid drop, there was a charged liquid drop of radius r and uh, charge q, let's suppose. Its initial capacity, the charge, the capacity of the big drop is Cb. Now, due to some mechanism, it is split into n tiny drops like this. It is split into n tiny drops. A charged uh, liquid drop of charge Q0, radius R and K, its capacity is Cb, big. Now it is split into n tiny drops, n tiny charged drops without losing the net charge. The total charge is conserved, charge is conserved. Then he is asking you what is the capacity of the each tiny charge, each small tiny liquid drop. The capacity of the liquid drop is dash. Now let us do this problem. When n, when a big drop splits into n tiny drops, how does the capacity vary? Now, you know the charge of the bigger drop is capital Q. Now it is split into n tiny drops. Let the charge on each drop be small Q, identical tiny drops, all equally charged. So let the charge on each drop be small Q. This way n drops. So the net charge on the tiny drops is there are n charges, charge Q. So the net charge of all the small drops is n small Q. But we know charge can either be created or not destroyed. The total charge remains same. So the initial charge is equal to final charge. So capital Q is equal to n small Q. The first relation. Then according to law of conservation of charges, capital Q charge is n small Q. Similarly, if I take the mass of the bigger drop, let the mass of the bigger drop be capital M. And the mass of each drop be small m. Then n such drops, it is n into small m. But you know, charge is volume into density. Sorry, mass is volume into density. So mass of the bigger drop is volume of the bigger drop into its density rho. n times mass of the smaller drop is volume of the smaller drop into density. Whether density, whether big or small, the density is same. So this gets. So, volume of the big drop 4 by 3 pi capital R cube. This radius is capital R. Its radius is smaller. So, it is n times 4 by 3 pi smaller. Well, 4 by 3 pi, 4 by 3 pi cancel. Capital R cube is n small r cube or capital R is n power 1 by 3 small r. Second relation. Second relation. First charge. Bigger charge, the charge of the bigger drop is n times the charge on smaller drop. So, according to law of conservation of charge, it is like this. Here, according to law of conservation of mass, when there is no other mechanism taking place, just simply I am splitting them. Then, mass is conserved. Total mass of the bigger one is mass of the tiny drops. Capital M is n smaller. But mass is volume to density, volume of the bigger drop into rho, n into mass of volume of the small drop into rho. Well, density of a charge, density of a liquid drop, whether big or small, density is same. So, this cancel. 4 by 3 pi capital R cube is n into 4 by 3 small r cube. This, all this cancel. So, now he is asking you to find out the capacity of the drop. The capacity. You know, capacity of a bigger drop C big. We know the formula is 4 by 3 epsilon naught radius. The radius of the bigger drop is capital R. So, capacity of the bigger drop is 4 by epsilon naught, the radius of the bigger drop. Similarly, capacity of the smaller drop, each tiny drop. Then this is 4 pi epsilon naught, its radius. Let the radius of the smaller drop be smaller. So, dividing both. Capacity of the big drop to capacity of the smaller drop is radius of the bigger drop to radius of the smaller drop. Right? So, therefore, then, but radius of the bigger drop, we have found it as n power 1 by 3 smaller. Substitute. So, capacity of the bigger drop by capacity of the smaller drop is n power 1 by 3 small r by small r cancel. So, when it is up like this, then the capacity of the bigger drop is n power 1 by 3 times capacity of the smaller drop. If the capacity of smaller drop is given, then you can find the capacity. The question can be asked like this. n tiny liquid drop, charge liquid drops, n tiny charge liquid drops 
fuse together to form a bigger drop. Then what is the capacity of the bigger drop? Well, C big capacity of the bigger drop is n power 1 by 3 times the capacity of the smaller drop. First case charge is like this. Second, capacity of the big drop is n times the capacity of the smaller drop. If you compare the capacity, it is n power 1 by 3. Sorry. It's 1 by 3 times the capacity of the smaller drop like this. Well, from this you can see, sometimes he will even find out, ask you to find out the number of drops. A, a small, tiny liquid drops of capacity small c each combine together to form a big drop of capacity capital C. Find the number of drops. So, n power 1 by 3 is c big by c small. Cubing on both sides. So, the number of uh, drops. So, it's c big by c small whole cube it is. Cubing on both sides, you will get the number of drops. He can ask you to find the charge, capacity. Now, suppose he, in this, in the same case, if he is asking you to find out the surface charge density. The surface charge density, he is asking you to compare between the bigger drop and smaller drop. The surface charge density of bigger drop, sigma v, charge on the big drop by area of the big drop, capital Q by 4 pi r square. Then surface charge density of each small drop, sigma s. Charge on each drop smaller by area, its area. So, charge by its small area, 4 pi small r square. So, dividing this by this, 4 pi, 4 pi, etc. Sigma big by sigma small, it's capital Q by small q into r square by capital R square. But we know already we have found the capital Q is n small q. Substituting n small q by small q into r square by Capital R, you know, capital R, we have just found it as, capital R is n power 1 by 3 small r. <coughs> it's n power 1 by 3 small r whole square. Well, this this cancel. Sigma of the big drop by sigma of small drop. So, this is n into r square by n power 1 by 3 whole square, n power 2 by 3 by r square. Squaring here, n power 1 by 3 whole square, n power 2 by 3 r square. So, it's n power 1 by n power 2 by 3. So, this is taking this to the numerator. 1 minus 2 by 3, you will get it as again 1 by 3. So, sigma big is again n power 1 by 3 times sigma small. So, third one, surface charge density of the bigger drop is n power 1 by 3 times surface charge density of the smaller drop. Just based on the radius, radius of the bigger drop is also n power 1 by 3 smaller Surface charge density also changed. You know, for a charged sphere, sigma by epsilon is electric field. Divide both by electric field. This is epsilon naught. So, the electric field intensity on the surface of the charged drop. Sphere, conducting sphere, sigma by epsilon. So, this is electric field on the big drop. It is n power 1 by 3 times electric field on the small drop. So, fourth one, electric field. On the big drop is same n power 1 by 3 electric field intensity of the small drop. All these are same n power 1 by 3 only. It's a very big, very good problem based on this. Right? Sometimes he'll ask you to find out the potential on the big drop. Compare the potential on the big and the potential on the small drop. So potential on the big drop, you know, 1 by 4 by epsilon naught capital Q by R. Potential on the big drop, surface. Well, potential on the small drop, 1 by 4 by small, small q by small r, charge is small q, radius small r. These both cancel. V big by V small, it's capital Q by small q into small r by capital R. This goes up. So, therefore, substituting capital Q is n small q by small q and small r by well capital R we have already found it is n power 1 by 3 small r so it is n power 1 by 3 small r so therefore v big by v small is n by n power 1 by 3 so it is n power 1 minus 1 by 3 n power 2 by 3 so v big potential on the big is 2 by 3 times the potential on the small so potential on the fifth point the potential on the big drop is n power 2 by 3 times the potential of the small drop. Right? Various electrical parameters 
regarding a charged sphere they are compared with the tiny and big drops very important question i am putting all in one there right suppose if he is asking you to compare charge charge of small drop is q h n such drops combined charge is conserved so charge on the bigger drop is n q then surface charge density sigma surface charge density charge per unit area n power 1 by 3 times big one surface charge density is bigger one is n power 1 by 3 times the surface charge density is smaller one radius radius the relation between the radius of the bigger one and smaller one when same drop is splitting into tiny drops so capital r is n power 1 by 3 smaller well capacity is you know capacity of any sphere depends purely on the size there so i was writing the formula capacity is 4 pi epsilon not r k in any medium so capacity depends on k and capacity depends on radius that's all so c proportional to k and c proportional to r so therefore c1 by c2 is k1 by k2 into r1 by r2 simply for a sphere charged sphere so therefore capacity of the smaller drop bigger drop capacity of the bigger drop is n power 1 by 3 small drop potential then electric field intensity you know surface charge density for a charged sphere electric field is sigma by epsilon then it's sigma by epsilon like this so therefore when uh, it is a constant electric field purely depends on surface charge density so therefore it is same as the surface charge density n power 1 by 3 and similarly the potential potential we know the formula is 1 by 4 not q by r so q is n times but the radius is n power 1 by 3 we will get it as n power 2 by 3 so when n such <coughs> n tiny charged liquid drops fuse together to form a big drop then the comparison between their charge capacity electric field potential surface charge density right so this can be compared like this capacity surface charge density and electric field radius all are similar it's n power 1 by 3 big value is n power 1 by 3 times smaller value whether it is radius capacity electric field surface charge density all four same simple thing well charge you know charge is conserved n to initial charge final charge is same potential differs from all these things it is n power 2 by 3 similarly we can similarly you can even find out the potential energy also you will get the potential energy as n power 5 by 3 apply the thing well we we'll, when we come to the energy concept we will take up the uh, energy also so potential of the bigger drop it's n power only small difference remaining all are similar there well charge you know charge is conserved n charges combined the total charge is nq it has to be conserved but radius surface charge density capacitance electric field all the four it is n power 1 by 3 bigger one is n power 1 by 3 times smaller one potential is n power 2 by 3 times the smaller okay right so this way you can find out thank you